I remember the simpler times, when the days felt longer, and the only screen we looked at was the one between you and the back porch. When tick tock was just the sound a clock made. You might think that you need fancy gadgets, but the truth is, it's all about being back to basics. Buying your toys with the few dollars you made from the sweat of your brow and the strength of your back. A little bit of cash, a lot of bit of elbow grease. Sorry, Thomas, I don't want to ruin your whole shtick mm. uh, about the everyman and everything, mm -hmm. but uh, is that an original GNX Buick jacket? Yeah, it came with a car. Came with a car, 1987? Yeah. 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 So I have it here online. They trade between three and four thousand dollars a jacket. Yes, that's that's true. How much is the bloody car worth? It's more than that. A lot more than that. More than that. Yes. All right, just 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 it's so expensive. Just take it off. Okay. Just take it off. All right. You look like my grandma's boyfriend. Watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And that is a goddamn American legend. It's the early 80s, and straight off the back of some NASCAR wins, it's time for GM to capitalize on the Buick Regal's racing success. So, following the advice of the Rolling Stones, they paint it black. They also stiffen the suspension, give it cool wheels, a spoiler, eventually a turbocharged V6, and then they release a commercial with George Thorogood telling America that this new muscle car is straight up b -b 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 bad to the bone. By 1986, this new Buick, the Grand National, is a 250 horsepower, Corvette beating muscle car. That means the Grand National is faster than the Corvette. And all with only six cylinders. And then came 1987, a year of partnerships. Thomas's parents got together and did the thing and he was born. Mike Tyson did a Nintendo game. William Shatner kissed a whale. Disney partnered up with McDonald's for their first ever Happy Meal. But for American muscle car enthusiasts everywhere, a far more important partnership blossomed. Buick and McLaren. Well, ASC McLaren. So not quite McLaren, the racing team, but a sunroof company that bought McLaren's Michigan powertrain division. So still, McLaren. And together, they create the 276 horsepower GNX, the Grand National Experimental. The Grand National to end all Grand Nationals, its final form, a Corvette Killer, a Countach Slicer, a Ferrari Dicer, and all for less than 30 grand US. So does it live up to the hype? And is it worth the rather large price tag that these sell for nowadays? And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe, hit the bell. So, how much are these now? Well, keep in mind this is a special GNX. They only ever made 547 of them. Uh -huh. You know, adjust it for inflation, it would be uh -huh. 70, 80 grand today. Right. This one, though? 250,000. 250,000. Um, it, it is pristine, though. Yes, to be fair to this particular car, it is basically showroom. Like, it has just rolled off the showroom. Well, it is incredibly nice. So, this was provided to us by Fusion Luxury Motors here yes. in California. And their showroom looks like a museum. It's incredible. It's the isn't most it? incredible collection. Yeah. And they are such a great bunch. And I'm very glad they gave us this to us. With 1,300 miles on it, we will look after it. Yes. Um, but yes, as you can see, it's a GNX. You can see that by the center caps on the wheels. It says it GNX says, on them. It says yeah. GNX on the back. It says yeah. GNX on the, uh, the front. Wow. And then we've got these uh, air vents here to exhaust away the extra heat coming. From a big from fat turbocharged yeah. motor. 
And well, it, so there's grand national stuff as well. Like this is a special grand national thing that everybody loves, yeah. right? And you know, the fact that it's on these big ridiculous wheels and the fender flares and the whole thing. I, I, this car, I didn't grow up in this, in this continent and this car means nothing to me. Right. And so uh, there's no nostalgia. And uh, I've learned, you know, there's like the Monte Carlo had the same sort of, same chassis, same shape. Lots of these, lots of cars at this time had the same general shape. You gotta give it some. Yeah. Yeah. They did that. It's powered by Boomer Humor. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. It's powered by a 3.8 liter turbocharged <gasps> six cylinder. Oh, it's so hot. And we barely run it. Uh, it's very oh, hot, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it's very hot. So, oh, that's cool. So, so yeah, the GNX Whoa. specific on there, and then uh, this is this is the, the Grand National has this emblem as well. It's a it's a turbocharger in the shape of a six. That's pretty cool, which actually. is weird at the time because everything was a V8. Well, that's why this was such a big deal, right? It came out of nowhere, and then they're just like, you know what? Let's just turbocharge the crap out of a V6 and see what happens. And they did. <laughs> and they did. Look and it, at this. You can only get it in black, just like the Grand National. Right. So uh, Darth Vader spec only. Yeah, and, and I will admit, like, and you were saying this isn't something that means a lot to you. Personally, this has never been a car that I've been, like, extremely excited about. I always thought they were cool. It I strikes knew... me as something you'd find on the Woodward Dream Cruise in Detroit. Like, it's not, <laughs> it's so far. From, it, it's so far from what you're used to, right? Yeah. But I mean, like, I, I've always liked these types of cars in general. I don't like, I'm, I'm not drawn to them by any means. I, I just assume there's a dead body in the back. The, <laughs> the, the, tr the trunk is huge. It is massive, yeah. No, but seriously though, I, I, I'm very excited to drive this car because I've heard so many things and the hype around this thing is insane, obviously based on the price that they go for. So, should we have a go? Yeah, let's have a go. Right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, I found the only fault in this particular car, James. Go on. The headliner is resting on my hair. You know what? <laughs> it's to remind you there's something between you and God. <laughs> right, so that's wrong. I've actually looked at a few listings of these cars, and that yeah. seems to be a very common problem. Yeah, most of the glue that they used just didn't yeah. quite hold up. What about the whole seatbelt situation? Oh, no, well, they're just manually, they're manually adjustable. You just gotta reach behind you and just tug them so that they, yeah. You, you get, it's a choose your own attention. You've chosen, cool, cool, cool. Well, it's, got, it's got all the safety features, obviously. Uh, no. Cool. Yeah, no air, you know, ABS or track control, anything. It is just pure 3.8 liter turbocharged V6. Yes, which puts out 276 horsepower and 360 pound feet of torque. That's because it's the GNX, It right? doesn't, it really doesn't sound like much anymore. But back then, that was a lot. That was big. That was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I think I've, I've read all different accounts, but people seem to agree that this does about five seconds to 60. Some say 4.5, some say 5.5, <laughs> and, and a quarter mile in the 13 second range. That's out of the box. How's the traction there? What traction? Yeah. Woo! How old are the tires? Uh, 1987. Okay, what uh, did we say we were never gonna do again? Go in a car with old tires. Right. But there's no rain on the ground anymore. <laughs> Four-speed transmission there is doing what four-speed transmissions from it, the every gear it kind of just pushes. Kaboom. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't quite downshift the way you want it to. But yeah, people have yeah. turned these cars into monsters, like absolute engine monsters, because they're quite bulletproof. They've used this engine in a lot of vehicles. Yes. I, I saw. I don't know how modified it was, but I saw someone run an 8.7 second quarter mile in one of these, <laughs> well, and it, it wheelies. Woohoo! There goes the rear. There's really not much roll in the corners. No, there though. isn't actually any roll in the corners. I'm noticing that. Well, like since it's a GNX, it's been completely upgraded, right? So the engine, for starters, has a better flowing intake manifold. It has a better flowing exhaust. Uh, the turbocharger was upgraded. Different engine management, and the chassis itself. Speaking of handling, it's stiffer, and the rear suspension has been redesigned, right? So for a an American car from the 80s. Yeah. It really doesn't lean in the corners at all. But it weighs 3,500 pounds, which is yes. not a small amount back then, and not even now. Like, but, no. But now, compared to a muscle car, it's light. It is. It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't it, listen, agile but is that, not the word, but there's the, oh, there it goes. No, sounds, it's quick. It sounds quick. muscular, though. It that, does. That doesn't sound like a normal V. If you told me this had a V8, I'd believe you. <laughs> right, just because just there's like a rumble to the exhaust. The rumble right? and the way it, like, it does all the muscle car movements of Yeah, I, no, you know. exactly. Except the one difference is, uh, I will direct your attention to this noise. Ready? Uh, a 
Well, that's cool. <laughs> we have proper turbo noises on this thing. I love it. All right, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, I do would, would, would like a manual, but. All right, we're down to first. first. <laughs> Listen, this is not a precise tool. It's not like. No. It's not like a, you know. This is a quarter mile monster. It came out. That's what it to is. To beat the it's Corvette. Just, yeah. And it's like. I'm comfy, I'm relaxed. Yeah, and I you don't know. think that was ever really the point of it. <laughs> but... I'd, I'd like to feel more secure. <laughs> you know, I've got enough insecurities, I don't need the physical ones. <laughs> but the, seriously, I, I don't, I don't want to say, listen, I don't want to say it's a fun car to drive in a canyon, because it isn't. No. I feel it's like... It's a promenade cruiser. This. It, it, yeah, well, now anyway, but back yeah. then, it feels like it's like, straighten out road, come on. I just. I just want to rip it in a straight line. That's all I want to do. It's, you know, it is cool. I will see. You want to drive it? Yeah, give me a go. Okay. Okay. All right, here we, yeah, this really, oh, hey, oh. It just likes me better. Look at that. Full tension. Full tension. Full tension. All right. You want to know why? It's because I did a mini burnout. <laughs> it's like, this is my guy. <laughs> Look at these little ditty wing mirrors. Do you? Yeah, they're, they're barely there. Yeah. You don't need wing mirrors on a drag strip. Visibility out the back's pretty strong though. Only to see Corvettes, am I right? Well, there's just tons of visibility in general. That transmission change. The doo -doo. No, I know, it's not. And yeah, there. there it is. Yeah. That's third. <laughs> there it is. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, it's 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 loose. Oh, I'm just I'm not confident going into the corner, you know? The way that just shifts. No. Yeah, it's not perfect. I mean you could manually shift it if you wanted, but you know that even that that automatic shifter down there isn't super precise. <laughs> I'm just trying to picture yourself like 87. Yeah. You just got one of the 547 GNXs. Yeah. You can roast everyone. I think people, it was almost F40 speed. Yes, it was. It, it, I, it must have been such a cool feeling, like knowing what you had, right? It's. <laughs> I totally get sitting here, you know, feeling this. It, this does not feel like a sports car in here. No. Right? It doesn't even really feel much like a muscle car, other than the fact that you've got some extra gauges because it's the GNX, right? The steering is light. The steering is very light. Very yes. light. But like, uh, it just like the knowledge that you're in a Buick. Like, think what else is Buick? You, to you, you want to know something funny? I, this is the first Buick I've ever driven. Good. Good. What have they got now? An, an enclave. <laughs> an enclave. Yeah. A lacrosse. <laughs> No, but this was just cool. It, it, out of nowhere, it's a Buick. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's, That's why it's will, cool. I'm gonna admit, it's not my thing. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not sure it's mine either, but I, I get why people adore this thing, right? It's, it, you know what, driving it here on the highway, seeing people from all walks of life, all different cultural backgrounds looking at this thing, like all different types of Americans look at this thing and go, oh my God, that's what, that's a GNX. They all know. I, I didn't know, right? I, if I saw this in traffic yesterday, I wouldn't have known. But exactly. Now, now I know. Now you know. And you know that this is basically, it's a hero. It's a legend of the people. Yeah, and this one's in great nick. Why don't we, yes. why don't we pull over and talk about all the amenities we've got going on here. Okay. All right. Okay. What do elf eyes see? What do you have? I see. I see a well. First of all, a pristine interior. Like it's it's, it's honestly insane. Beautiful, and I, like from so, I already have a big black car from the late 1900s. Yes, you do. And yes. I know how charming they can be. And I yes. did, I never thought the American versions could be charming. I don't know why. This is very nice in here. I actually really like the light gray. Yes, I love the light gray. Like, it's yeah. really, really nice. And what, what separates it from the normal Grand Nationals is you've got the, the actual number GNX that this is there. Out of, the, out the of, well, that wasn't 500, right? 547. 547. So that's, this right. is number 116. That's pretty cool. We also have the special GNX white on black gauges yeah. that mean the bidness. The bidness, the bidness, the bidness. Yeah. yeah. And this actually goes to 160 miles an hour, this gauge. Whereas the Grand National only goes to 85. Even though it can go faster. Even though it can go faster. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, but it and does we, say the turbo 3.8 liter there. I like that. I like that writing, and I, and I like that there's a turbo gauge. Yeah, but it says it in the in the UK European spelling. 
Oh yeah, litre. litre. I, <laughs> do you think English people say litre? Litre. Yes, we say litre. We have uh, the way you can move these little mirrors that we said before. Yeah. Is a cable, so they're not yeah. electric. They just move like that. That's yeah. the right one. It's very smooth. And I've got my one there. Well, I'm just quite smooth with it. You're just quite smooth. I see. Yeah. But electric windows, electric locks. Yep. Electrically and, and the, moving seats. And the seats are powered too. That's right. With tiny little buttons. Look at that thing go. Working perfectly. Are you comfy? I'm very comfy. These seats are, well, obviously, they're just like big old American, like, benches, right? It's it's honestly really, really nice to be in here. Tons of space, too, obviously, front and back. Your dead body, yeah. But, but <laughs> here's the thing. I, as I said, I, I was never really a huge fan of this era of American cars. I always, like, liked them. But if I was going to seek something out from the era, you know, I mean, I end up European, I end up with an Italian car or something. But being in here right now and after driving it, it is really awesome. I totally get why this is people's dream car. It, Seriously. It, it really feels like a demon from this era. Oh, exactly. It, yes. Sofa, big engine, horrendous rear end control. I cannot put the power down. <laughs> It's, no, it is, this is a seriously cool I, car. I do get worried yeah. about the, these in, indicator stalks. Yeah, listen, go ahead. Ugh. It feels so very weak. Yeah. Like the same person that has to close the heavy door yeah. cannot be the same heavy-handed person <laughs> no. that does that. It's a dainty touch. Yeah, you, you can hold it. I'm, I've been holding it. Just to have the signal so turn the temporary now? signal. Because yeah. you don't like the click. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the click. That's funny. But everything else I really, really do like. And mm. it's been an absolute education. It's, it's definitely like a piece of history, this. And uh, I'm glad that we got a chance to drive it. Objectively, as a driving experience, $250,000 gets you a lot more than what the GNX is able to provide. But if you judge the GNX against the performance of a 911 Turbo, you've missed the point. It's part of a story that has captured the imagination of many an American. Did it set up Buick as a romantic name to last for centuries? No, definitely not but perhaps that's part of its intrigue. It's full of memories, a time capsule, especially when the example is as immaculate as this. And while it might not seem worth the money to some of us, to the right person who lusted after this car with a poster on their wall growing up, it's actually priceless. Thanks for watching. That's true. How much does the car worth? <laughs> <laughs> Four hours sleep. It's fucking dying. Four, four hours sleep. <laughs> How much does the car worth? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about something else that I missed saying.